Good morning, my lovelies, and welcome to Painting in Your PJs live with Manette. Super excited to be here with all of you this morning on a really interesting and uh, pretty fiery day today. It is the total eclipse of the sun as well as the new moon. So lots of powerful energies. And welcome if you're just stopping by for the first time. Good morning, good morning. Hi, Cindy, welcome. I am delighted to be here with you on this pretty special day. I'm Dr. Manette Ryard, and this is Painting in Your PJs with Manette, where we were all about using art as a creative practice and process for personal growth and self-discovery as well as good morning good morning as well as on Mondays a way to start the week week off from just a little bit you know from a place of calm and intention and mindfulness and a lot of times Monday mornings can lead us to feeling a little scattered or overwhelmed or even grumpy. I don't want to be here. I'm not ready, right? And even when we're retired or in my case where my schedule is completely my own, there's an energy of Mondays that some people love and some people really struggle with. And I think a lot of it is the stories that we tell ourselves about time. But I also believe deeply in starting every morning from a place of intentionality, whether that's prayer, meditation. For me, it's art and writing and what I call my morning art activation process, my map process. And it always involves a little art and a little writing in a variety of different ways. And I always start with the simplicity of lighting a candle. And there's something about lighting a candle that creates that sacred atmosphere that instantly brings me into a feeling uh, a little more calm. I'm a, maybe it's my Catholic upbringing, but I love ritual. And... I love repetition of ritual and routine and the way that that really nourishes me both in my art as well as in my life. So today I'm going to be working on one of my son Connor's beautiful little mini designs from our, and I haven't decided which ones, I really love these minis and I'm going to move this candle aside so I don't stick my paper in it and light anything on fire here and as i'm looking at this i'm i'm looking at the designs but also at the beautiful affirmations so our monthly sacred circles membership is 15 dollars a month and it includes these gorgeous designs three live calls for coloring and mindfulness and zentangle it's one of my favorite things that i that i get to do every month and I'm leaning into both the designs as well as the affirmations this morning. I have the power to change what does not serve me, or I have the power to overcome my doubts, worries, and fears. But I'm feeling really pulled to this bloom over here. So I think this is the one I'm going to play with. And I was feeling called to play with water this morning. So I'm going to play with some watercolor pencils and then bring in maybe if I have time a little Zen tangle over the top of that. If not now, then later. And I always like to start these Monday mornings with an oracle card. And I asked this morning, you know, what is it that my community needs? And it's a pretty fiery message this morning, not to be surprised with the energy that we're in. I also, before I drew the card, as I always do, I pre-selected a variety of colors and got the same colors of these fire here. I've been really into the reds, oranges, and yellows and wanting more of that brightness in my life, especially a lot of yellow. I started a large mandala painting this weekend and uh, 
lots and lots of yellow energy and I think it is that that light and, and that is coming more and more to the foreground right now as with the spring with the longer days but there's also this very fiery energy on the planet now I am not an astrologer I don't know a lot about this but from what I'm reading it's such an interesting day so I was talking to my daddy yesterday because he lives outside of San Antonio, Texas, right in one of the, the pathways where you can get, be in the totality of the solar eclipse. And I've been super curious about why this is such a big deal. Well, my dad said in San Antonio, Texas, where he lived his whole life, the last time they had a total solar eclipse was in the 1300s, like 1357 or something. So it's a little bit of a big deal. Good morning, Marion. Great to see you, my friend. And so, um, Marion, are you going to be able to see the, the totality today? I know you're near one of the areas. Um, that I haven't paid super close attention. I know my friend in the Adirondacks, they're, they're telling people to uh, who live there to stay home and stay off the roads because they're expecting such an influx of, of people today. And it's kind of fascinating to me, but the card that I pulled, 92% amazing, that's really cool. And it's a new moon. And new moon energy is all about planting seeds. So I love we have this combination of darkness of the totality and the darkness of the new moon that opens up opportunities to let go of what's no longer serving us. I'm, you know, I should stop being surprised when all the things that I choose kind of play together. And I specifically asked this morning about what does my community need to hear? And the card that I drew was overload. And this card is all about stop saying yes from uh, a place of needing to serve others or um, a place of being recognized, uh, you know, really that energy of being a people ple pleaser. And a lot of times we look at how we show up in service to others as this selflessness, but it often leaves us feeling drained, unappreciated, and abused. And so we need to just look at our own sense of responsibility to others and why we keep saying yes and learn how to say no in a healthy, empowered way with really strong boundaries. So the spotlight here is on the need to change our patterns regarding unchecked desires to serve or be helpful because it's exhausting and at some point you cannot give from an empty well. And this inner work can feel like opening a tightly closed fist or it can feel like Sisyphus who's constantly pushing the rock up the hill and never getting a break. He pushes the rock up, it rolls down, he comes back and um, it can feel impossible but we need to learn to be more flexible, to be more in the energy of self-care. And I love the message, you don't have to earn it, you don't have to prove it, you don't have to bargain for it or beg for it, you are worthy, worthy, simply because you exist. You don't have to beg for it, you are worthy, worthy, simply because you exist. So the energy that we're playing in today is this idea of overload is a choice and we get to let go of what no longer serves us. So again, that affirmation that I'm working with today is I have the power to change what does not serve me. I've got some watercolor pencils of different sort of fiery colors. And let me uh, brighten up my lights here a little bit. There we go. I was on a kind of funky interview yesterday, all about Oracle cards, interestingly. And so it's different on my face. Dark as in the dark ages refers not to bad or backwards, but to the lack of sources or resources about that time. Yeah. Lisa, it's never a coincidence when we start to hear a word or see a sign or a symbol in a variety of different places. And the dark ages, I love that. Lack of resources, um, information, right, about that time. All right, so the first thing I wanted to do, and I think I'm just going to use... 
one of these other sheets here was I wanted to just play with my colors. So sometimes when I find it hard to just get started in the mornings or and these are all my beloved Derwent ink tents pencils. Sometimes I just need to scribble and put some color down and bring myself back to calm, back to center a little bit. These are some Derwent watercolor pencils. They're not the ink tents and they're new to me. This is a Karin de Ash, and I think these may end up all being really, really similar. And I started listening this weekend to a book that just, you know, popped up in my Kindle as something you might like called Wayward, W-E-Y-W-A-R-D, about three generations of women who were accused of being witches and the things that were happening to them. And it's really interesting to listen to right at this time. Again, there's no coincidences. I'm noticing, I've been paying a lot of attention to paper lately, and I'm noticing that uh, this is just plain old cardstock, nothing fancy. And I would probably like this a little bit better. Oh, look at that color. Mm. Uh, like this a little bit better on some watercolor paper, but I've got a lot of similar colors here. So this is a definite yes. I think this little bit more fiery red, maybe a couple of yellows, and uh, I think that's that's really all we need today. So sometimes, again, just um, sitting down. Yes, it is a beautiful cover, Lisa, a beautiful cover. Sitting down and just putting a little color on page. If you saw my journal from my writing earlier this morning, um, it had a lot of scribbles and sketches in between and amongst the words. And it's about learning to just let go of our need to have our page look like something and to really allow ourselves to be more in the energy of what's going to serve me best right now, which relates to our card and that idea of, you know, overload and where are we overloading ourselves? Where are we overloading ourselves by not being able to say no to opportunities? If you've taken our brand new What's Your Creative Superpower quiz, then you're starting to learn about how you respond to opportunities. And if you're a Clarissa, you can easily, easily get yourself caught up in that energy of overload. And I want to invite you always to ask why you're saying yes to opportunities. Are you saying yes because you have a fear of missing out? Are you saying yes, because it sounds like a good idea in the moment and then you didn't pause to really look at how much is on your plate right now? And when I was younger and my kids were younger, I said yes to way too many volunteer opportunities and it led to exhaustion, not having enough energy for my family, my kids, my husband. I was always on the go and doing things. And I was saying yes out of habit. So I was raised by a lot of really strong women who, you know, when they asked you to do something, there was this expectation that you would jump and say yes. And I had to work really hard to unravel that burden of responsibility, that uh, expectation that if someone asked, I had to say yes, which really wasn't the truth. And so learning to say no is one of the best things you can do and to really understand why are you saying yes? Why are you saying, are you saying yes from a place of lack instead of from the energy of worthiness? Yeah, it's so true. It's exactly what the book is about, Mary, and about uh, that energy of control. And one of the easiest ways to begin this process of letting go 
is to pay attention to the thoughts that go through your head when someone asks you to do something. Is there a sense of obligation or I have to or I don't have a choice? Is there a sense of, whoa, I'm going to miss out if I say no to this? Like really think about why are you saying yes? Is there a need to please someone else and, you know, to that not let someone else down and to really think about your family of origin and what were the what were the expectations when you were asked to do something was it a command performance okay so the dir went on this paper are just so 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 i'm learning something here so i'm letting go of control letting go of the what I can't change right now in this moment, and I'm going to have to be with the pencils. So again, in every moment, there's these little lessons. Yes, Diego. Diego's coming to say good morning. Used to be a sign me up, Cindy. I love that. Yeah, and no excuse with a no. I think that's so important. No excuse with the no. And so what I love about these morning art activation sessions that I do almost daily, sometimes I don't do writing, I go straight to the canvas, but I spend time every morning with myself in contemplation. I used to always listen to, you know, a book or an audio of some kind in the morning, and I've really let go of that and just be with my own thoughts in the morning or listen to some instrumental music and just being thoughtful about what's on my heart today. You know, what do I need today? So as I look ahead to the week, I'm intentional with my calendar. I'm intentional with my time. making sure that I've blocked out time for my most important creative work and that when a friend calls and says, hey, you wanna, it's okay to say no, that there will be other opportunities. When I get invitations to connect with someone or to show up in service and volunteerism in some way that I really am mindful of looking at my calendar and deciding, do I have the time and the energy to say yes to this? And if I do, great. And if I don't, I get to let it go. I hear the words to frozen in my head, let it go, let it go. And so spending this little bit of time in the morning, just adding a little color to this sweet little spring flower that my son created for our Sacred Circles membership reminds me that I'm always growing and changing, that only I have the power to change what no longer serves me. And that this is a like letting go and learning to say no is a practice. It's not a one and done. It's not going to happen overnight. If you're someone that is a perpetual people pleaser or has that need to constantly be serving others that you're afraid of saying no because you're afraid of the rejection. It's a practice and we don't, none of us gets it right all the time. And I think I mentioned a few times on here that uh, the beginning of January, I joined my local artist guild, which is primarily a volunteer run organization. 
and my normal tendency would have been to jump right in and volunteer and I become friends with the young woman who's the the president of the board currently and uh, I told her not to let me say yes to anything that uh, this is a practice in just showing up and being part of the community and there's some volunteer effort that is required and it'll be great. I know what it is. I know when it is. And it's been interesting to just show up to the last couple of meetings and just be in the audience, not at the front of the room. All right, just keeping things really simple. Somehow I want a little more of that fiery red in here, but I might need to get this dry first. And I'm gonna hit this with the dryer and then I'm gonna come back and add some Zen Tangle patterns over the top. And I, what I love about designs like this one specifically is there's room to write words in the center. So, you know, I have the power to change what does not serve me. It starts with believing I am worthy. So I'm wondering if, uh, you know, something like the flower doesn't need to be reminded it's, it's worthy. It just blooms. It just is. It blooms, it dies, and then it blooms again. And I think so often we forget those natural cycles of nature. I'm gonna hit this with a dryer. Right. I'm hitting that with the dryer because I don't want to risk running the t tip of a pen. Hi, Tori. I'm missing you, my friend. Good morning. Good morning. So something here about the flower. doesn't need to be reminded. That it is worthy. Right, it's not blooming out of any need to please others. So I'm using a Uniball Air Micro here. It's a pretty thick tipped pen, so I will keep my line and patterns pretty simple, but it does tend to flow over just about any paint or color nicely. I don't worry about destroying the tip like I do with my microns. And it always amazes me just adding these black outlines starts to brighten up the colors, bring in some of the contrast. And this beautiful blooming flower is a striking contrast to our Oracle card for today, which I don't know where I put, put it back in the book which is all about strife and burden and carrying this and overloading ourselves with saying yes too often, right? So the flower is the ab absolute opposite of that. So really remembering your own worthiness.
slowing down, remembering to breathe. When you approach any creative practice or process, whether it's morning pages or soul collage, just that simple act, like we said at the beginning, light a candle, and then pause to take a few deep breaths to physically relax your shoulders. Like I can feel my shoulders starting to creep up around my ears. But to consciously relax my body, relax my hand, relax my breathing. so that I'm very present in the here and the now. There's nowhere else I have to be. That to-do list isn't going anywhere. Apparently I'm a byway for the cat this morning, Diego. And then something happens to interrupt our flow every time. The phone rings, the cat tips over the bucket of paintbrushes. Maybe the doorbell rings or suddenly your partner's tapping at the door going, hey honey. One of your kids call needing help and support like it's so easy to get pulled off of our own path. And the best thing we can do for ourselves is to really pause and carve out the time for this mindful sacred work. A deep connection to self and our own inner knowing that strength comes from within and from practice and consistency. I remember when my kids were little and it was the first time that I'd done the artist way and uh, you know asking Brad, I think I just had Connor at the time and uh, asking Brad to help me with that sacred time in the morning like dude I'm gonna go and close myself in the bedroom over here and you know can you hang with Connor while I have this time and he was awesome he did and then I would forget and I would go back to my regular patterns and then I'd have to start again And now we both have really quiet, sacred time in the morning. We're in opposite corners and floors of the house. And doing our writing and our journaling. So this is one of my all-time favorite classic Zen Tangle patterns called Poke Leaf. Again, and out of all of this fiery energy, it feels like, you know, something is growing. We can zoom in on that there a little bit. And also the reminder, I think the totality of the eclipse is like four minutes, right? It's not this crazy long time and yet it's enough to remind us of that feeling of, you know, the sun leaving and returning again and the light returning again. The reminder we're in spring, the light is returning again. So a lot of sort of that light energy and the opportunity to release what's no longer serving us. I remember pretty vividly the last partial eclipse that I saw with my husband and my kids in uh, when we were living in Goleta. 
and it's pretty spectacular. We'll barely, barely see any here, just a tiny little, tiny little sliver. And as I'm drawing this such simple pattern, it's one, two, three lines. And this in and of itself is a mindful meditation, a simplicity of just repetitive practice. Not about making it fancy, but about just leaning in that long skinny triangle, that little upside down C, that little upside down heart. Just over and over again, reminding me of the power of practice, of repetition. I don't have to get it right the first time. So who else is in the path of the eclipse today and it's making time to be able to go out and have a look. A lot of people in my spiritual communities are talking about feeling the intensity of the, the energies. So, you know, if you're feeling a little extra emotional today, there's a reason for it. We can also work with our affirmations as we're drawing. I am worthy. I have the power to change what no longer serves me. Ritual, routine, repetition are all things that nourish and support us and as creatives can be pretty frustrating and boring at times. We love the new, but I guarantee you that your spirit is a longing for a little bit of that routine and repetition to not always have to be learning, growing, doing, but your inner spirit and your creative spirit benefit from being overdoing. And for me, when I'm here in this simple repetition, it is all about just being here now, nowhere to go, nothing to do. Oh, that's cool, Tori. I didn't know you would get that much where you are. Hoping to get outside in the clips path a little, refresh and renew. Nice, very nice. All right, I'm going to finish up these two petals. And then move on with the rest of my day learning. When I start to feel that rush of, oh, I got to finish. There's more to do, but I don't have to finish. I just have to pause and I can pick up the thread another time. There was one writer that Brad and I read about, I can't remember who it was, might have, might have been Hemingway, uh, who in his daily writing sessions would always leave a sentence halfway written so that when he returned to the next session of his writing, he could just pick up exactly where he left off. And there's something about walking away from an unfinished project and trusting that you can come back to the beginning, come back to exactly where you were, pick up where you left off at any moment in time. 
And I think part of that is also a practice. It trains our creative selves to not always have to be at the beginning, but to understand how to pick up in the middle of where we left off. And I think sometimes unfinished projects, that weight of unfinished projects feels so heavy because we don't remember where we left off. What were we doing? What was I thinking? So getting better at returning to the middle of something is also a powerful creative skill. All right, my friends. The flower doesn't need to be reminded that it is worthy. Oh, that's so fun, Lisa. I love blackout poetry. All right, my friends, you are worthy. Be mindful of saying yes too many times. Be mindful of that feeling of overload today. Be reminded that you have the power to change or I would say to let go of what no longer serves you. Have a beautiful day, my friends, and I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Bye, everybody.